This review is brought to you in part by Rogers Hobby Center in Saginaw, Michigan, where the fun begins. Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the 1951 Anglia Drag Coupe. It's a 125 scale kit from Ravel, model kit number 85-1269. It's rated skill level 5 for advanced builders, and there's 119 pieces molded in white, chrome, clear styrene sheet, black vinyl tires with water slide decals, and well laid out instructions. During my research, I found that it's been released at least five other times, mostly as with the Skipper's Critter logo as the original in 1970, and most recently as the Anglia Street Rod in 1999. But this version has been brought back for the selected subjects program from Ravel, and we're glad they did. Here are the contents of this kit, and some people would call this an open box review. They'd pick up every part and sprue and try to find some words to describe the parts, but that won't help you build the kit, will it? So, we're going to show you an open box review in about 10 seconds. Now remember uh, that for the most part we're going to use testers model cement in the tube and enamel paints in the bottle uh, sometimes used for hand brushing or through an airbrush but uh, please remember to follow the safety guidelines by the manufacturers for any of the products that you see here in the review. Here are the decals for this kit and as you can see the colors are, are nice and the registry is crisp. It's uh, mostly uh, going to go on a darker background however because of the white lettering so keep that in mind when you decide on your paint but um, you'll also find it helpful to use some of the aftermarket uh, setting solutions available to make sure that these larger decals conform to contours and stick well to the body. Construction starts with the engine so we're going to use uh, these parts to assemble the uh, engine's top, the left and right sides, and they're attached to the bottom section. Now the engine assembly then is painted uh, testers flat cobalt blue, and the engine top is painted testers aluminum. The top's then secured to the uh, left side and the right side, and then the oil pan is attached to the bottom of the engine. Now the magneto is detailed with some gloss orange, and uh, the magneto oil filler tube and the engine cover are added to the top of the engine. This uh, subsection of the engine construction will look like this uh, at this point so you can see it's coming together nicely. Now we'll gather these parts and uh, the engine front and the bell housings are painted uh, flat cobalt blue as well and the belt assembly is uh, uh, Model Masters flat black. The engine front is then attached to the front of the engine assembly and the fuel pump is glued to the belt assembly uh, before that assembly is secured to the front of the engine. Then the flywheel housing is attached to the rear of the engine assembly and the bell housing is glued to the engine assembly and the flywheel housing. Gather up these parts and the cylinder heads are also painted engine color cobalt blue and then the right manifold and left manifold injectors are painted testers aluminum. The cylinder heads are then attached to the uh, left and right respective engine top and the rocker covers are attached to both of the cylinder heads. Two sets of the injector tubes are secured to the right manifold injector and then it's glued to the top of the engine and likewise on the left side. Now we'll be adding these parts as the left transmission haft uh, is attached to the right side and then the transmission is painted testers aluminum and then glued to the bell housing on the engine assembly. The shift lever is then detailed with some semi-gloss black and attached to the transmission. Now the left and right exhaust headers and the collectors then are painted uh, flat white and the collectors are attached to the you know left exhaust header and the right one uh, to make that a subassembly. We can add the subassembly exhaust uh, headers now uh, to both the left uh, side of the engine as shown in this picture and also to the right side of the engine and uh, you can see this thing's uh, really really got some power for a small block Chevy. Now we'll move back uh, to the rear axle so we'll grab these parts out and the axle rod is installed into the uh, axle backside. Uh, don't put any glue on that 
and then the axle front is secured to the back trapping the axle rod into place so again if uh, tire rotation is desired you don't don't get any glue on the rod because it's plastic and it'll glue itself right to right uh, stationary there so the rear axle assembly is then painted uh, steel color grab the uh, the radius rods here and related parts and uh, take the right and the left rods and paint those tester steel and the uh, the right side is secured to the right side of the rear axle assembly and the left uh, uh, rear spring likewise is glued to the rear axle assembly. Now the left rear radius rod is also glued to the uh, axle assembly just like the right side along with the left rear spring and then glued to the axle assembly so you have a subassembly there. Now get out the uh, chassis and related parts here and we're going to paint the uh, chassis uh, semi-gloss black and then the rear uh, shocks are detailed with some orange or really any color that you prefer but for this one we use the orange and then uh, some testers uh, semi-gloss black on the ends. The drive shaft is painted aluminum and the rear axle assembly is attached to the chassis assembly. Now the rear shocks are then attached between the chassis assembly and both the right and left rear radius rods and the drive shaft is attached to the rear axle. Now. Um, you'll notice that uh, in this shot there's um, a picture of the trademark script there on the bottom of the chassis which could be visible after assembly so I removed that with some uh, just scraped it off with a hobby knife and some sandpaper to smooth it out. Um, there's some in other parts of the uh, body but uh, for the most part they, those are covered up so uh, the door panel and the trunk front panel won't be seen you know once assembly is completed and uh, in this last shot there's a, a trademark logo that is stamped on the part which is pretty easier to cover up with some paint so don't worry about that one. So grab that uh, engine subassembly that you put together earlier and install that onto the chassis and the uh, locating points uh, that it's uh, indicated in instructions and make sure you scrape off any glue uh, from the parts uh, that uh, uh, you're putting together because glue, uh, glue doesn't stick well to paint uh, as well as chrome. You want to remove any chrome plating before you glue those parts into place too. Now we can turn attention to the tires and wheels and uh, we'll take the rear inner wheel and snap that on into the drag slick and then the rear outer wheel is snapped into the drag slick and attached to the rear inner wheel. So repeat for the other side of the rear drag slicks. As for the front assemblies, um, we'll take the front inner wheel and snap that into the front tire much like the rears and then the front outer wheel is snapped onto the front tire and attached to the inner wheel. So repeat for the other front tire and now we'll have uh, a set of wheels and tires to add to our build. You might want to consider also adding a little black wash there to pick out some of the highlights of the wheel nuts and features there. Get out the engine mount here and the backing plates and uh, we're going to paint the, um, the engine mount uh, gloss black and then both the rear wheel hubs are painted steel color and then they're installed on each side of the rear axle assembly and the rear drag slicks then are attached to the rear axle assembly. So you put a, a dop, drop of glue on that axle end so that it only uh, is glued to the wheel backings. Uh, to make sure that uh, they continue to rotate after that starts to set up you can just turn them a little bit make sure uh, that they don't stick in place. So the engine mounts attached there uh, to the chassis assembly as well uh, to hold the engine in place uh, up front. Get these parts out and then uh, paint the uh, steering arm uh, pieces of uh, steel and then the right and is attached to the right front brake and left uh, likewise to the left front brake. And then if the parts uh, come off the parts trees, uh, they can easily be identified by the groove for the steering arm brakes and the post on the steering arm. Uh, the right side is shaped like uh, an L rotated 90 degrees left and the left side is much like an upside down T. The left and right front brake assemblies are, are next uh, and so grab these parts out uh, with the spring there and they're installed onto the front axle assembly 
um, no glue as, as you recall. Uh, remember to have the steering arms going toward the back of the front axle assembly and the front shock supports on the front side of the front axle assembly as well for orientation. The two front uh, spindles there and the axle pins are painted tester steel color and the axle pins installed into the front spindle. And the desired effect is for the tires to rotate. Uh, if you want to do that, don't glue the axle pins into place. One of the very few issues I found on this kit was uh, some light flash here on the front spindles. Uh, so just um, uh, hold those uh, firmly, put them on a, a surface uh, that uh, you're not worried about cutting and, and trim that flash off with a hobby knife uh, to make sure that the parts fit together well. Paint this tie rod uh, steel color and when that's dry uh, the front spindle assemblies are snapped onto the left brake assembly and the right uh, front brake assembly and then the tie rod is snapped onto the right steering arm and the left steering arm. Now the post for the drag link on the tie rod goes on the right side and the front tires are installed onto their axle pins with a little dab of glue there just on the ends of the pins and the tires uh, seem to be kind of wobbly uh, so the only way to correct that would be to glue the front spindles in place um, if you want to uh, make sure that they look uh, proper when sitting still and that would uh, keep them from being able to move like they were designed to but uh, it's a pretty loose fit there so either uh, replace the spindles with a larger diameter uh, uh, plastic rod or uh, uh, choose either of those options for your display. The front shocks uh, can then be detailed with uh, the same color as your rear shocks. I used orange and some semi-gloss black for that. And the front axle assembly is installed um, onto the chassis assembly. Then the front right uh, radius, I'm sorry, the right front radius rod is attached to the front axle assembly and the chassis and likewise the left uh, is installed the same way. Then the front shocks are attached to the front axle assembly and the chassis, chassis assembly. Here is the front bottom view of the front axle assembly installed on the chassis so that uh, you can see that section along with the front shocks for clarity uh, and position. Paint the firewall uh, as seen here, get the parts out and, and that should be semi-gloss black and detailed with some silver for uh, some of the instruments and wiring etc there. I've outlined uh, some mold lines here that need to be carefully sanded down. It's pretty light and it removes easy, but uh, you're going to want to sand those off smooth so that they don't show up after you paint the, uh, paint the vehicle. I'll paint the uh, time to paint your vehicle, so give it a good overall sanding with some light grit sandpaper, at least uh, 800 grit, and then uh, rinse that off, let it air dry. Give it a coat of primer inside and out. And then in this case, um, I used uh, gloss, uh, Tester's Gloss Custom Red uh, for my coloration to uh, approximate the box art uh, because I think it looks great in red. Um, I don't know that you're stuck with that choice. Uh, I don't think uh, that there's any specific historical vehicle here, but um, it does look good in red and the decals will make it. Uh, look really nice. So the windows get cut out from some clear styrene sheet after you install the firewall um, there uh, once the paint is dry and and there are some uh, patterns there but you can simply uh, use the window openings to mark the uh, sheet and then cut those out and use some clear part cement uh, or even some white glue to, to put the uh, windows into place and uh, there, there is a template there in the instructions and that works uh, just as well. I found it best to cut out a paper test pattern first to make sure that they fit uh, before actually cutting the windows out um, because that just seems to help uh, make sure that it's uh, a proper fit when you get to go to glue those windows into place. Uh, paint the, uh, the doors, the left and right ones, uh, similar fashion as the body and uh, then you can use the door window templates to uh, cut out the plastic styrene and attach those to the doors with some clear cement again. And make sure, once again, they're the correct size by uh, using a template on a piece of paper first and make sure that they fit. 
Now uh, I painted the interior panels a uh, gloss black uh, color to kind of simulate the vinyl that would have been used for this. Uh, and then the, uh, the right door and the left door are installed uh, onto the body assembly and the left door is uh, uh, installed into the body assembly and the left door panel is attached to the left door locking the left door onto the hinge pins on the firewall and the same process is done to the right door to lock that door into place there. Find these uh, parts and then the radiator assembly is painted uh, aluminum and lower and upper radiator hoses are painted with uh, flat black and then the lower radiator hose and both the uppers are attached to the radiator in place. Install the radiator into the chassis assembly and then the lower radiator hose is attached to the engine front in its location and the upper hoses are attached to the right manifold injector and left manifold injectors there. The uh, trunk panel front roll bar and rear seat are painted uh, semi-gloss black uh, as well as the gas pedal roll bar trunk panel front and the rear seat then attached to the chassis assembly. So paint the uh, bucket seats and the roll bar supports semi-gloss black and then the roll bar supports are attached between the chassis assembly and the roll bar and the bucket seats are then attached in place to the chassis assembly. Find these pieces from the kit and then the uh, steering gear halves and steering column and the retainers uh, painted uh, semi-gloss black and after that's dry the left steering gear half is put on the steering column with no glue and then the right steering gear half is attached to the left one trapping the column into place so don't get glue on the steering column. Now make sure that the steering gear halves are installed correctly onto the steering column so it can be attached uh, correctly to the chassis assembly. Now the retainer then is snapped onto the steering column locking the steering gear halves into place and the drag link is painted um, steel. I deviated somewhat from the instructions by installing the body onto the chassis assembly before adding the steering column into place. Now the instructions also show the body in place on the chassis before it's installed so I think the builder took a hint from the uh, the way that it goes together. That's in step 12 even though in the next step the body is then installed. So uh, I would try that it seemed to be easier and then the drag link is attached to the tie rod and the steering column. So the hood uh, and the related part here is sprayed um, just like the body uh, a gloss red color and detailed with some flat black and then decal number three is applied to both sides of the hood after that dried and then the grill bars are attached to the hood as well. Snap the hood into place on the hood hinges on the body uh, there's no glue required there and then the following decals are uh, added to the body assembly number one is applied to the doors and I suggest uh, you use some of that setting solution to make sure that they conform properly and lay down right and then number seven uh, decals are um, on the front fenders five and six under the rear quarter panels and number four on the rear fenders then decal two on the rear side windows the tops of the battery boxes are attached to the battery box and and the assemblies are then painted uh, gloss black and both the fuel tank supports are aluminum and the fuel tank top which is actually the tank bottom there's uh, an instruction uh, discrepancy there is attached to the uh, to the top and then the fuel tank assembly is attached to both of the fuel tank supports and now the fuel tank assembly and both the battery box assemblies are installed into the trunk. The trunk lid of course uh, is painted just like the body was uh, with gloss red and detailed with some semi-gloss black and the trunk lid is carefully installed into the body assembly and the rear door handle and tail light are attached to the trunk lid. Uh, the push bar is then attached to the chassis assembly below the trunk assembly. The headlights are sprayed uh, just like the body in gloss red and both of them are attached to the two headlight housings. Uh, 
uh, and then the headlight assemblies are attached to the front fenders. The steering wheel uh, gets detailed with some Model Master wood color and then attached to the steering column. The door handles are then attached to the left and right doors. Finally, we'll attach the steering wheel to the steering column and finish off this great looking kit. What a great subject matter item for your shelf display. Well, there you have it. Uh, this great looking subject matter kit uh, can go proudly on your shelf now. And it was a really good kit to build. It's a fairly simple build, uh, but it wasn't too spindly on the suspensions. Uh, as some of these are and it really looks nice uh, when it's completed. Now there was just a, a few parts that had a little flash on them um, and there's a couple discrepancies uh, regarding the fuel tank uh, parts but uh, actually the kit went together well. It was uh, straight, there wasn't any warping uh, and even the doors uh, and trunk seemed to fit pretty well and work on the hinges uh, so it was a good design even for its uh, uh, era of uh, mold design so I think you're going to enjoy this kit uh, I'd go and uh, get one while you can because uh, the SSP kits from Ravel uh, are uh, a limited production run and then they don't make any more typically uh, for a long time so get one and uh, build her today well there you have it we hope you like this premium step-by-step -step model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can also find us on Facebook and always at our website, www.writeonreplicas.com. Thanks.